Start your day with remembrance of us. Start your day with remembrance of us. Start your day. Start your day. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Dear viewers and listeners of Madani Channel, welcome back to another wonderful episode on the Silsila, The Early Echo. And whether you are in whichever country, whichever city, whichever province, whatever season you are experiencing, we hope that you and your family are well and safe. Do make dua for the grief-stricken ummah of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that is suffering out there. in different parts of the world where the oppressors are oppressing them in such ways that we cannot even explain. Allah Jalla Jalaluhu from His hidden sources remove their difficulties and grant them help as well. Today we have another wonderful topic being in this beautiful season of Rabi'ul Ghawth, the month of Ghawthi Paak, Ghawthi Azam, Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, the King of all Awliya Allah, We are going to be discussing about his childhood today, inshallah, and to derive some lessons for us, especially for parents out there, in order to do the proper tarbiyah, the proper training and nurturing of their children, of our children, according to Islamic teachings and Islamic values as well, inshallah, azza wa jal. Let's make some good intentions by remembering the beautiful hadith, Niyatul Mu'mini. The intention of a believer is better than his action. So let's make the good intentions. Oh Allah Azza wa Jal, I am watching, I am listening to the silsila of Madani channel for your pleasure and happiness, for the pleasure of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What I learn, I will try to practice and convey this message to others as well. Insha'Allah Azza wa Jal. There are so many wonderful blessings for reciting Durud-i Paak, Salawat, salutations upon the cause of creation, the cream of creation, the crown of creation, the owner of Jannah, the knower of the unseen, the intercessor of the Ummah, our most merciful master, the last prophet of Allah Azza wa Jal, the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Listen to this faith-refreshing, wonderful excellence of reciting Durud-i Paak as narrated by the Fat Khalifa of Islam. The fourth successor of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Amir al-Mu'mineen, the commander of the believers, Sayyiduna Mawla Ali, Karumallahu ta'ala wajahu al-Kareem. He says that Allah azza wa jal has created a tree in Jannah. The tree has such a fruit which is bigger than an apple and smaller than a pomegranate. It is softer than butter. sweeter than honey and it smells better than musk. The branches of this tree are made of moist pearls. The trunks of this tree are of gold and the leaves are made of chrysolite. Then he says, those who recite Salat ala Nabi durood upon the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in abundance they will be able to eat the fruit of this tree. Don't you and I want this privilege as well? This is exclusively for people who recite the Rude Park in abundance, in Jannah. Allahu Akbar. I'm sure we do. So let us make it our habit and dedicate some time every day for the recitation of Quran e Park, the Rude Park, Istighfar, Fikrullah. And seeking knowledge of deen from authentic sources which your Dawud Islam has the facilities, the platforms, activities and material for it as well. Alhamdulillah Azza wa Jal, we will be talking about Ghosi Azam's childhood. But before that, let's listen to a beautiful kalam, Sallu ala al-Habib, 
صلى الله تعالى على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم الله الله
الحبيب صلى الله تعالى على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ما شاء الله عز وجل what a beautiful rendition and recitation we should also try to recite these kalams don't worry about if whether I have a nice tune or a nice voice no it's about love that comes from the bottom of the heart it's about sincerity it is about embedding that love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam deep within our hearts and in the hearts of our children as well, in the hearts of the next generation of our offspring. And if you have grandchildren, nieces, nephews, in their hearts as well. Love of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, love of Sahaba ikram alayhi wa love for Ahlul Bayt and love for Awliya Allah. And subhanallah azza wa jal, look at the whole thing azam. Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani rahmatullahi ta'ala Ali. As, as the years and the errors are going by, his eminence is just continuously growing and getting higher and higher. His Gharwi Sharif is being celebrated around the globe, subhanAllah. And it's only increasing. Like Eid Miladun Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How every year you see more and more Eid Miladun Nabi programs and functions and Julus and Milad is taking place. So, without comparison, but likewise, Yadmi Sharif, the eminence of Hosi Azam, speeches, sermons, talks, Khatme Qadriya, subhanAllah, is happening on a monthly basis. Don't just keep Khatme Qadriya for the 11th of Rabi'ul Akhir. If a person wants blessings throughout the year, then at least try on the 11th of every Islamic month. Try to have a khatam sharif, khatm qadiriya, beside qasida ghothiya, subhanallah azza wa jal, because therein lies a lot of barakah, a lot of blessings, and we're searching for this, we're looking, we ask people, 
I don't have baraka, I don't have blessings in my rizq, in my home, in my family, in my life. This, these are ways in order to, for the showers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercies and blessings to descend. And when you are talking about these pious people, then don't think you are wasting your time. Maybe shaitan will enter waswasa, evil whisperings in the heart, in the mind. What are you doing? Don't waste your time. No, is a narration that says, at the time when you remember the pious people of Allah, the mercy of Allah descends. So even now we are hopeful that we are talking about Rasi Azam, who is the king of all awliya Allah. We are hopeful that those special mercies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is descending upon us, upon us, upon you all, upon whoever is watching, whoever is listening as well. Rasi Azam rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, Allah Akbar. You know, the more you read about him, his biography, his seerah, the more inspiration one derives, the closer one gets to him. Allah Akbar. But even in the belly of his honorable mother, Umm al Khair Sayyidah Fatima, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Aliha, he used to listen to her reciting the glorious Quran. And when he was born, and when he commenced, to start reading Quran, he read up to 18 juz, 18 paras he had recited. And when the teacher said, Beta, my son, please recite more. And he said, This is all that I had heard from my mother when I was in her womb. Imagine, not yet born. So here, a point that ulama have mentioned. If the mother is good, if the mother especially who is expecting, who is pregnant, if she is listening to bayanat of authentic Sunni ulama, if she is listening to recitation of quran Pak, if she is reciting Quran, if she is listening to Kalam and Naat and Hamd and Mankabat and Munajat, if she is practicing the Sunnah, if she is punctual with her Salah, if she is... Inviting others towards goodness, saying good things, then subhanAllah, the fruit will be good as well. That has an effect because it is known that one of the first organs to develop in the fetus is the ability to hear, subhanAllah. But on the other hand, if that mother is in the habit of listening to music and songs and singing, all of these sinful songs, if she's in the habit of not reading her salah, not performing her salah and practicing on sunnah, of reciting Quran, of watching movies and dramas and soapies, that has a negative effect, a negative impact on that baby that is still in her womb. Allah Akbar. A narration mentions that subhanAllah Azza wa Jal, when Hosi Azam's honorable mother had sneezed. She heard that voice from her womb saying, Yarhamukillah. She said, Alhamdulillah. And the, the voice came, Yarhamukillah. Because when somebody sneezes, a Muslim sneezes and says, Alhamdulillah, then if you heard it, then you have to reply. It is wajib to reply. Yarhamukallah. And look at this now. He said, Yarhamukillah. Because the pronoun there, the kaf, has a kasra, a zir, because that is denoting a female, the feminine form, Allah, but subhanallah. When a male sneezes and says, Alhamdulillah, you say, Yarhamukallah. If a female sneezes and says, Alhamdulillah, you say, Yarhamukillah. Obviously, we should reply to uh, the, a, a mahram, either way, subhanallah. So, Husi Azam, because this environment was set up. We mentioned yesterday about his honorable parents, their characters, what refined character they had. Subhanallah, subhanallah, amazing. And today that we're discussing about his childhood, when he was born, subhanallah, azza wa jal, he was born in Ramadan. He was born in Ramadan, first of Ramadan, the month of fasting, Allahu Akbar. And he would drink milk at around sahur time, sari time, and would not drink anything until iftar time. 
Allah subhanallah. This is Ghosi Azam. He was born a Wali Allah. Chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be his Wali, his friend, a saint of Islam from birth. He didn't drink. He fasted in that condition. It may be very difficult for us to believe such a thing. But these things have been recorded. These things are there in black and white. And why not? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives these abilities. He gives these capabilities, these powers. Subhanallah azza wa jal. Allah sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ghusi Azam, rahmatullah ta'ala alayhi. One day, he's outside the astana, the khanka of his grandfather, Sayyiduna Abdullah Suma'i rahmatullah ta'ala alayhi. It was his maternal grandfather, meaning his mother's father. His grandfather was also a great wali of Allah, a great scholar of Islam. And people used to come to him, whatever issues, difficulties, problems they had, they used to come to him for the, his advice and to make du'a, take his du'as as well. So one day he's a young child. He's outside playing around and he sees a lady approach the Khanga, the place of his grandfather. And she's banging on the door, banging on the door. And she's crying profusely. So Hosea Azam at that time, being a little boy, approaches her and says, oh Dear lady, what happened? Why are you crying so much? And she was holding a baby in her hand wrapped up. She said, My dear son, my husband passed away. And left me with this little baby. My baby got extremely sick. I thought of coming here to get some cure, to get some du'as for his shifa and his recovery. But on the way here, my little baby passed away. And I'm presenting myself, still I'm presenting myself here in the court of this great wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who's close to Allah jalla jalaluhu. And Anything is possible through the blessing of Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything is possible. So I'm, I'm banging here to speak to that Wali Allah, Sayyidina Abdullah Sumai Rahmatullah Ta'ala Ali. She then began to weep and cry again. Musi Azam being a little boy, Subhanallah Azza wa Jal, says that, Oh dear lady, don't worry. Your baby has not passed away. Your baby is still alive. Look, he is breathing. Without any hesitation, she quickly uh, opens up the shawl and she sees for herself that the child that was a corpse is now alive and rubbing its feet together, playing with its fingers. And she gets shocked. She's happy, but she's shocked by this. Sayyidina, Abdullah Sumai rahmatullah ta'ala witnesses this from inside the khanga and immediately comes out. He comes out and he starts to reprimand Hosi Azam, who's a little boy. He's got a stick in his hand and he's saying, you started to show these secrets inscribed with the holy pen so early? The boy runs into the direction of the graveyard and his, his grandfather is chasing behind him. When he enters the graveyard, he shouts out, Oh, people of the graveyard, please help me. When his grandfather reaches the graveyard, he was shocked to see 300 dead bodies that were buried six feet down. They had come out of their graves to protect Hose Azam. Rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi. And the saint looked at his grandson, Hosepa, Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani, Rahmatullah Ta'ala, and he says, My son, I cannot achieve your rank, and so I surrender myself before you at your will. That little boy was Ghosi Azam, Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani, Rahmatullah Ta'ala, Ali. Subhanallah, Allah Jalla Jalaluhu had given him, had bestowed upon him, had granted him these special abilities from his childhood. Subhanallah. Do not allow 
wasawis and evil whisperings of shaitan to enter the mind. How is this possible? That he made 300 people who were buried, Allah and his Rasul was best when they were buried, how long ago they were buried, to exit and come out of their graves in order to help him. Be careful because this kind of evil whisperings of shaitan will, can destroy a person's iman and question the power of Allah Azza wa Jal because He grants these abilities to whomever He wills. As we see, the glorious Quran mentions about, about Nabi Isa, Ruhullah, Ayna Nabi Yina wa Alayhi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that bi'idhnillah, through the permission of Allah Jalla Jalaluhu, Allah granted him those abilities to make the dead alive again. Subhanallah. Sayyidina Rufi Azam, Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani, Rahmatullahi on the eve of his birth, his honorable father, a great wali as well, Sayyiduna Abu Salih Musa Jangi Dost, Rahmatullahi saw in his dream that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, along with Sahaba Ikram alayhi wa and Awliya Allah, they visited his home and they gave him glad tidings with the following words, O oh Abu Salih, Almighty Allah has blessed you with a pious son. He is my beloved and the beloved of Allah Azza wa Jal. And his ranking, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says in the dream, his ranking amongst the awliya and aqtab is similar to my rank amongst the Prophets and Mursaleen Alayhi Wasallam. We all know that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Imamul Anbiya Wal Mursaleen. He is the leader of all the Prophets. He is the leader of all the messengers. We know this, we affirm this. So here it is mentioned that similarly, Hussi Azam is the Imam, Imamul Awliya. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Imamul Anbiya Wal Mursaleen and Hussi Pak is Imamul Awliya, leader of all the Awliya Allah Subhanallah Azza wa Jal. Also Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, besides Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abu Salih Musa Jangi Dos Rahmatullah Ali had a dream that all the other Prophets السلام, also gave him glad tidings of the birth of Rasi Azam. That, that all the pious ones, all the saints Taala, will be following his son Rasi Pak and upon their necks will be his foot, meaning showing his authority. This is all from childhood we are talking about. We can continue on so many other such incidences that we come to the realization that Allah Jalla Jalaluhu gave him these capabilities, these powers, subhanAllah, what we call karamat. Karama, which is a supernatural uh, act, a miracle, which is performed by, by a pious one man of Allah Azza wa Jal. One day, our Hosi Azam Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi I'm sure you know the incident when he was traveling. One of the things that his mother advised him as a young boy, that what, no matter what it is, always speak the truth. Always be honest. And as it is said, that honesty is the best policy. In fact, honesty is not only the best policy, it is the only policy for a true believer. Come what may, even if it's against myself, speak the truth. Be honest. And on that journey, we know what happened. Before he leaves, before he leaves his mother, Allah, she bids him farewell. And she says to him, I separate you for the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal. And now, I would only see you on the day of judgment. Allah, can you imagine? She sacrificed him in the path of Allah Azza wa Jal only to see him again on Qiyamah, on the Day of Judgment. SubhanAllah. And when he's, when he's traveling and those, those criminals, those robbers, when they rob the Qafila, the caravan, what happens? When they ask him, him being a, a small boy at that time, traveling alone in the path of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala with strangers, with people he doesn't know, 
going to a far off place. Not for business, not for profit, not for income. But to study deen. To study Islam. And to convey that message to others. He tells the robbers, I've got 40 dinars. One dinar is, is so expensive. We're talking about gold coins. Gold coins. He remembers the advice of his mother that insisted that whatever it is, speak the truth. And he told them. They couldn't believe. Small boy like you, 40 dinars you got? And what you're telling us? He said, yes, my mother said they must always speak the truth. They find it. And they become so ashamed. Allah Jalla Jalal who Allah Akbar guides them. They repent. Each one of them, they repent. They make toba sincerely in the court of Allah Azawajal. They change their ways and they become practicing good Muslims. Allah. Look at the effect of truthfulness. So as I mentioned, we need to derive so many lessons over here. Truthfulness, refraining from lies, which is so commonplace in our society, so prevalent. A person under the excuse of it's just a white lie. Just a white lie we, we tell our children. We tell other people, where does this concept come from? It has no place in Islam. It's something made up by others. And we just jumped on the bandwagon. Oh, okay, it's just a white lie. Or a person will lie and then cross their fingers and put it behind their back. That they're telling the person something, but they feel justified that I'm crossing my fingers behind my back. So it's a lie, but I'm justified. Astaghfirullah. Repent. Make sincere toba. Ask Allah. Beg Allah for forgiveness. Whatever lies we have spoken. And make a firm commitment of not lying again. This, this evil, this major sin of lies, it has penetrated and infiltrated into many people's lives, Muslims' lives. In order to remind ourselves about controlling this tongue, because a lie is a lie no matter what color you want to call it. It's written down by Kiraman Katibin, the scribes that are waiting. Whatever you mean to say, whatever you mean to do, they have written it down. They have recorded it for the day of judgment. So now is the time to repent. Now is the time to realize and take these lessons from Hose Park, Hose Azam Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani, even in his childhood, even as a young boy, that his mother taught him well, nurtured him and trained him well, that these are the do's, these are the don'ts. This is what Islam says. Oh, we should not get, pay attention to the, our egos, our desires, our own opinions, if it conflicts with the Sharia. The Islamic sacred law of Allah Azza wa Jalla and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Unfortunately, many of us, we fall into these traps of shaitan. We fall into these traps where we start listening to the opinions of society or we bow down to the societal pressures out there. Yeah, no, this is you know, the custom of the time. This is the culture of the time. This is my opinion. These are the opinions of the experts in society. If it goes against Islamic values, it has no place in your life. If you adopt that, then you are heading for big trouble. And all you have to do is do a cursory study and some little research on what is happening out there in the so-called civilized nations of the world where they have freedom of expression, so-called. Go and see, go and have a look for yourself how the nuclear family, how the, the mother, father, children, how the families have been disintegrated, have been broken to pieces, have been destroyed. And there is no more peace and harmony in those societies. And we follow what they try to feed us, then we are also going to suffer that fate as well. We have the sunnah in front of us. We have the, the example of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam before us. So what else do we need? We have hundreds and thousands of heroes, of role models in the form of Anbiya alayhi wa sallam. And at the top, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
we have sahaba ikram alhi muridwan ahlul bayt athar we have awliya allah salaf salihin pious predecessors so many so many of them that they lived the correct lives what this quran mentions in surah al ahzab verse 21 بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة. Translation from Tanzil Iman. Indeed, following the noble messenger of Allah is better for you. Who am I for you? I'm not there to judge you. You are not there to judge me. But we need to judge ourselves. Who am I following? What system? What methodology? What kind of life am I living? Am I living my life within the precincts of Islamic teachings and values? Oh, I'm just, I have fallen to the demands of my ego, my desires, and my personal opinions, and to the personal opinions of others. Yes, the entertainment industry is there to make our minds this is the life this is the dream this is a life you need to live if you want to be happy and look at the famous so called famous people out there who are who have been made famous by those who want to bring about the destruction of the family unit who want to bring destruction to the society a harmonious society they are the ones We're trying to make our minds, in particular via the entertainment industry, via the sports industries as well. And are we obeying that or not? Or are we obeying Allah Azza wa Jal and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Osi Park's life as a child, as a young man, so many lessons we can derive. He leaves and he goes all the way to Baghdad Sharif. Then he goes to learn. He enrolls in the jamia. Subhanallah. How about making an intention of enrolling your children in jamia? As Amir Ahl Sunnah Dhamma Barakatun Aliya, the founder of Dawud Islami, advises us: every home out there should have at least one alim and alima, one alim or alima. And Dawud Islami has the facilities. Jamia Tun Madina. This is the Darul Ulum of Dawud Islami. Males and then separately for females, and Subhanallah, quality education by qualified teachers. Enroll them to be enroll your kids in our Madrasa Tul Madina. This is to help help you actually to nurture them, to train them as good practicing Muslims. We have a lovely short clip, the love of Hosi Azam for students of Islamic knowledge. We'll be right back after this. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani radiyallahu ta'ala had great love for students of Islamic knowledge. The following account testifies to this. It's mentioned that Sayyidina Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani radiyallahu ta'ala, he had a student who was quite slow. He was dull. And it took him a long time to understand the sabak, the lesson. Who's narrating this? Sheikh Ahmed bin Mubarak, rahmatullahi alayhi. He says this student would come to Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani, would take great time to understand the lesson, yet Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani radiallahu anhu would diligently teach this student until he understood, continue to teach him, remain patient with him, was forbearing and tolerant. One day a person by the name of Ibn Samhal, he appeared and when he witnessed this scene, he couldn't hold back. He said to Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani radiallahu anh, that this student of yours is so slow, it takes him so much time. I'm astonished at your patience, how you're able to continue teaching him and remain patient because he struggles to understand. Listen to what Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani radiallahu anh said. He said, the amount of effort that I am putting into this student, there's only a week left. Why? Because he will pass away now. The narrator, Sheikh Ahmad bin Mubarak rahmatullahi alayhi says, From that day, we began to count the days. And when a week had passed, and on the last day of that week, the student of knowledge passed away. Allahu Akbar. So, 
this also shows the great knowledge of Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani. At the, at the same time, his affection, love towards students of knowledge too. May Allah Ta'ala bless us with the same. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Have you heard? Have you heard how concerned Ghusi Azam was for that student? Because he established his own madrasa. And he taught even those subjects that you'll find today, even today in Jamia, in the Darul Uloom. Because he knew the importance and he promoted Islamic knowledge. It comes down to that. Authentic Islamic knowledge. Yes, I agree. There's so many different informations out there on social media, on the internet, that one could become misled. It may seem all correct, but in between, people put wrong things, their poisons, their wrong beliefs. Stick with Dawud Islam. Dawud Islam has it all. For Islamic sisters, for kids, for grown-ups, for teenagers, specialized classes, to teach us how to recite the Qur'an, to teach us the basics of aqaid, of fiqh, of jurisprudence, sunan and adab, social etiquettes, with over 80 different departments working around the globe to uplift the ummah, to uplift myself and to uplift yourself, to empower us with correct Islamic teachings. Try every day to fill out the nik a'mal. You can download this for free from App Store, from Play Store, from the website DawdSlami.net as well. And monitor your own progress. Subhanallah. Hose Azam Rahmatullah Ta'ala Ali. Whenever, as a little boy, as a child, whenever he would incline towards playing with the other children, then he says, when I would decide to play with the children, I would hear a voice that used to tell me, Avoid playing. After listening to this, I would stop playing. And I would look around, but I wouldn't see anybody. I used to be scared. I used to run to the lap of my mother. He says, Still I hear the same voice in my seclusion when sleep overwhelms me. When sleep overwhelms me, this warning is there. You have not been born for sleeping. SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah. Himself, his mother sacrificed him. He sacrificed his youth as well to seek knowledge of Deen. And he didn't stop there. He conveyed that message of righteousness, of goodness to many others. It's mentioned that initially when he started to teach and preach, handfuls of people would join only. And then, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided people towards him to the extent where his gatherings would reach to 70,000 people plus. 70, can you imagine? 70,000 plus would be in his gatherings. And there would be hundreds of scholars that would be sitting there to take notes. Many have been called and have been fortunate enough to go to Baghdad Sharif and are present there right now. Maybe some of them are standing in front of the blessed grave of Ghosi Azam. Reciting kalams and mankabats and making dua and Allah subhanAllah Allah accept the ziyarat. Allah Jalla Jalaluhu take you and I again and again to visit Baghdad Sharif as well. And we'll see you next time only on Madani channel. Sallu ala al Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Start your day with remembrance of us. Start your day with remembrance of us. Start your day. Start your day.